Hello folks, man, I hope you are having just one of your favorite days that you've ever had in your entire life. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Leap Racket short story. This one is called Shannock the Last. Um, it was published in 1952 for the magazine Planetary Stories by Lee Brackett. So we're going to be looking at her short story. It's another sword and planet short story in the sort of low-tech science fiction world uh, that all of the stories that are in this collection of the best of, of, of Lee Brackett, which is a science fiction collection for you of fans for the pulp era writer uh, who wrote pr pretty prodigiously during that time. Now, Lee Brackett was a female writer during the pulp era of specular fiction, which is actually not that common, so that was good for her. Um, as a general rule, although there are some exceptions, uh, she t tends to write within the troops of the time. Uh, so she has some races and some ethnicities that are uh, still with the sort of racism and, and misogyny of the time, which is true for most of her works. Um, there is one work where one of the main characters is a, uh, a black character who is different than the traditional black character. Um, and I mentioned that with you uh, that I've read previously. Uh, this is going to be the second work that I've reviewed by Lee Brackett that I'm giving an 8 to. And this is my second favorite work in the story collection so far. Um, this is the 8th short story in the collection of about 400 some pages. And uh, it's about, and there are 10 short stories, so there's only 2 left. And so this is number 8 in the collection. Shannock the Last. So we're set on the planet of Mercury um, and we're gonna be following along and our main character is gonna be this prospector who's been, who's from, who's from Earth and he's been on Mercury for a while. And he's been on a quest for almost half of his life. And what is he questing for? The rare and incredibly valuable sunstone. These are radioactive, inert objects that are made on Mercury um, that are close to, because they're close to the sun, and they are used in a number of energy-based sort of things, uh, in engines uh, and in other things back home. Um, somebody who finds one sunstone uh, will, will be able to, 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 to live the good life. Lee Brackett has a particularly clever word. Uh, they'll go from, uh, they'll go from, you know, worker to plea, in, uh, you know, in, uh, to, um, Pluto, they'll go from Plebe to Plutarch in, uh, Plutarch in, in one mind. Um, it's a clever line. Um, credit to Lee Racket for, for coming up with it. Um, so basically our main character, um, he is, go he is going into this mountain range, uh, which he is, uh, doesn't think he's going to survive or see the other side of. Uh, after a few pages, he makes it through, um, and he will emerge and see this really weird, beautiful plane uh, that's very different than anything else he's seen before. Um, it's it's settled. It's been settled settled for a long time, uh, longer than uh, it, it appears that the that, that the Mercury colonies have been going, and it's these buildings and and food and birds they're big giant hawks uh and so he sees life that's out that way and so he begins to move towards uh moves towards it but he suspects he might be seen so he's hiding as he's moving towards it and um, having escaped the mountain range and uh he sees this woman uh, a young girl woman she appears to be, and she is running away from these two hawks that are chasing her. Um, and they appear to be about to, to kill her. Um, and knowing that it's a really stupid move by our main character, he jumps out of the shadows and leaps up and attacks him and kills both of the hawks. Uh, and they introduce themselves to each other, they run away. Uh, they're chased by uh, these leaders, and then they will wind up fleeing uh, the valley up into the mountains, and that's the first chapter of of a bit plus fifty plus. So what's going to happen next? Uh, who are these people? Who are the ones that were that were pursuing them? The slaves? Who are the slaves? Who are the slave owners? What happened in the valley? Who is Shinnick? Who's the title character of the short story? It is not introduced until like five chapters in, <laughs> maybe four, into the short story. Uh, and this short story is more than 50 pages long. Uh, it took, took me about 90 minutes for me to knock it out. It's more, it feels more of a bell length in terms of how long it took for me to read it. And I read it across two days uh, rather than just one. So it's a longer short story. So just so you kind of go in with your eyes around. I do like it. I think there's a few clever turns of phrase here and there by Lee Brackett, more than she normally has. Um, 
She's normally not, she's normally much more conventional in her word smithery. So, you know, all credit to her. I, I like what was happening here. I was never bored. I enjoyed it. Um, and I, again, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Uh, so there you are. That's Shanak the Last by one Lee Brackett, the female pulp writer. Have you read it? What did you think of it? Did you agree or disagree with my take in any ways? I would be more than happy to engage you with it further in the comments below. If you like this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these that follow in fantasy, science fiction, and horror. And then finally, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, right? And we're being pulled in so many different directions. So the fact you spent this time with me, wow, that's humbling. And I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have a great day.